detailjuice.com. I know it's been a while since I shot a detailing video. I've been very busy. I launched another company, which uh, we just got rolling yesterday, as a matter of fact. It went really well. Um, that's Reset Charters uh, in Tampa. It's Jet Ski Rentals and Tours. So if you guys are interested in that, check out Reset Charters on Facebook. Also, resetcharters.com will be available soon. Anyway, I've just been really busy. I moved into a new shop. Everything is, is going to plan. It's just taking a little bit longer than I originally anticipated to get everything smoothed out. But anyway, I'm back in action, still detailing. I'm never going to give that up. This is what I do. This is my passion. Uh, so I want to showcase some product, products for you guys today uh, on this, I believe it's a 2016 Honda Civic. And uh, as you can see, uh, it is pretty buggy, pretty dirty. And the interior is no exception. It is pretty dirty in here. Got some dog hair, got dirt and grime soaked into the seats. Pretty bad. Back seat, pretty gross. I'm going to show you guys how to get all these stains out of the seats and out of the headliner. It's pretty gross in there. I'm also using a new camera too. I don't know how well this is going to work out, but we are going to shoot all these videos today with this camera. So you can see what the headliner looks like. It's got a splatter from something all over it. Carpets are disgusting. Seats are disgusting. The whole damn thing is disgusting. See how dirty it is. 2016 Honda Civic. It's about to get a makeover. I'm going to take you on this journey you what products I use. I'm going to show you uh, some techniques, some processes, and uh, hopefully you learn something. All right, the first part of the exterior detail on this car, since I haven't detailed this car in over a year, well over a year, is I'm going to use uh, some diluted IPC infinite purpose cleaner. Um, this is diluted one part product to three parts water. So about 25% of this total bottle is uh, product. So where my finger is right here, about right there is where I filled the IPC and then uh, I filled the rest with water. So you can see all the bugs and all kinds of crap on the front of the paint. So this is going to break up all the bugs and that kind of thing. I'm going to do a traditional wash on this car today. Just, I don't know, feeling froggy, I guess. I don't really use traditional wash too much. I'm a rinseless kind of guy. Um, I'm not a swirl Nazi, so I don't really worry about that. You know, you do what you can to prevent swirl marks and that kind of thing, but I don't go overboard. Swirls are part of life, unfortunately, and uh, I don't really worry about it. I want my cars to look as good as possible. This is not mine. However, I want them to look as good as possible. I'm just not willing to let it run my life. That's all. So I'm going to do the back of the mirrors, that kind of thing, the whole front end. IPC is safe on the paint. I wouldn't let it dry on the paint. It's not going to hurt anything. I just wouldn't let it do it, so don't let it dry. Um, I am working with a uh, AR Blue Clean 112S right now. It's a very inexpensive pressure washer. Um, people ask me, what happened to the Eco Rinse Machine? Well, nothing. It's still available if you guys have to have it, but it was a little bit more difficult than I preferred uh, to have to deal with being the middleman on that. So if you guys want one, let me know. They're still 900 bucks. That's not going to change just because they're expensive to produce. Um, they are pretty awesome. It just wasn't worth the hassle to me. Anyway, so now let it dwell for a couple of seconds. Not long, maybe 10, 15 seconds, but then you hit it with the pressure washer. Um, I would not use more than around 1500 PSI on your vehicle. Uh, that's really just my preference. I feel like any more than that is really overkill and potentially going to damage your paint. With the Eco Rinse Machine you could do what I'm doing with 1100 PSI and get very good results. But the reality is, this $100 pressure washer does a great job. It is not a commercial unit. 
it won't last a long time. It's just, you know, inexpensively made. Unlike the Eco Rinse Machine, which is a commercial unit. But this is where we're at. All the bugs seem to be gone from the front end without any effort at all. That literally is the easiest way to clean bugs off your car. I shot another video on that recently. So pressure wash the bugs off. Give the car a rinse if you're going to do a uh, traditional wash. Go ahead and you know rinse all the heavy debris and that kind of stuff off the car. Now I'm not generally a fan of a foam cannon just because I feel like it wastes a lot of soap. However, if you are, I recommend rinsing the car first with your pressure, then hitting it with the, uh, the foam. So that's the way you do that. I'm going to go down and just give the whole car a good rinse. I'm not going to be polishing this one, but I am going to be protecting it. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with it yet. Most likely I'm going to apply Ceramacrylic Boost. It is the Ceramacrylics Pro Hybrid Spray Coating that I'll be releasing August 1st, 2018. It literally is the strongest and easiest to use product I've ever used. Um, and I'm not just saying that because it's mine, but I can tell you that I engineer everything of mine to be the best I've ever used because I can use anything on the planet. But I also can engineer products to do what exactly I want them to do, and that's exactly what I do at DetailTube.com. So anyway, I've rinsed the car down, and uh, looks pretty good. So I've got all the bugs off, now I can actually start in with the wash. For all intents and purposes on this particular job, I'm going to use the uh, Grip Launch soap. I've got a little over a gallon of water in the bucket. You only need about an ounce of this uh, product to a uh, gallon of water to wash. I'm going to go ahead and get that all frothy. Boom, nice luxurious suds. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and wash the car. It's not complicated. There's no real reason to watch me wash the car. Uh, I'm going to use the Gary Dean wash method, modified for traditional wash. I'm going to put about eight towels in the bucket. And I'm going to start from top to bottom uh, with the roof, the windshield, the rear windshield, and then uh, start on the front end and work my way around. Uh, so I'm using one towel per panel, essentially, um, or a half of a towel, I should say, because each 16 by 16 towel has up to eight sides you can use. So the Gary Dean wash method, if you don't know what that is, Google it. Um, it it's a thing, uh, believe it or not. It is uh, something I put together for rinseless that is literally the safest way to wash your car, especially when you're doing a rinseless, but also especially when you're doing a traditional wash. Uh, far safer, safer than your two-bucket method you guys are probably familiar with. Uh, so you can look up Gary Dean's The Perfect Wash, which is how I show you how to do the Gary Dean wash method with a traditional wash. But for this detail, I'm going to go ahead in and wash the paint, and then I'll show you how uh, and what I'm going to use to wash the wheels and that kind of thing. But that is the Grip Launch soap. All right, I'm going to get to work. Okay, I've got the exterior all washed. I am going to clay bar it, but first I'm going to clean these wheels up a bit. I'm going to use this uh, green brush I generally always use. I've also got my Grip Launch wheel and grime cleaner diluted in that spray bottle. That's actually cut 50-50 with the actual spray, which I usually don't recommend you dilute, but uh, it works alright. 50-50. In fact, I'm going to show you how well it works right now. So, these tires are pretty dirty. I just like to spray them all down. 
Give it a good soak with the cleaner. This stuff smells amazing. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to use my black, just a black microfiber towel that I use for wheels. And then uh, this here brush. Scrub the uh, wheel down, tire down, wheel down. Let's get in all the nooks and crannies. And this is not exactly rocket science, um, but the cleaner does a great job, is my point. Uh, it does a great job of cleaning your wheels and that kind of thing. The grip launch line is for basically pros that want lower cost of entry and for consumers who really just don't want to dilute products too much. Um, I am going to release hyper concentrates of uh, these grip launch products. Uh, just so that the pros can get a, a little bit better value, per se. Uh, that's probably going to be a couple of months out, but you can see these wheels were pretty pretty dirty. They hadn't been cleaned in a long time, and that wheel and grime cleaner, the grip launch stuff, cleaned them right up. So I'm going to go ahead around the car, and then the next point of detail will be uh, just a quick clay bar for the car. Now, I'm not going to spend all day clay in this car. There's no need for that. Uh, what I want to do is get the bulk of the contamination off and then I'm going to go ahead and seal it up uh, with the brand new Ceramic Acrylic Pro Hybrid Boost, which is the spray coating that I'm about to launch. Uh, it's a hybrid of, of the two different technologies. Uh, it works amazing. So, I'm going to finish cleaning the wheels and get it clay barred. Um, I do want to mention real quick while I've uh, got you uh, on uh, the camera here is I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly believe that you should switch over to the Gary Dean wash method, traditional version, because the two bucket method is dead. That's the bottom line. It is not as good as the Gary Dean wash method modified for traditional wash when you're washing one panel at a time, never reintroducing any of the dirt that came off the car back on the car. So when you are using the two bucket method, you're basically using a rinse bucket and a wash bucket. The benefit to that has always been that you're rinsing off a lot of the dirt that came off the car before you put it back in the soap bucket and then touch the car with the wash mitt. Now, with the Gary Dean wash method modified for traditional wash, you get the same benefits of uh, the Gary Dean wash method rinseless method, but you can use it with a traditional soap. So you'll pre-soap. Pre-soap would just be your rinse with your pressure washer or your hose or whatever. And then you're going to pull one towel out at a time, fold it into fours, and you're only going to use one side of that towel one time. And it's never going to touch that towel again. Or touch the car again, and it's also never going to go back in your wash bucket. You only need a gallon of water to make this wash happen, versus two buckets with what, two to three gallons per bucket, or more, depending on how you do it. The Gary Dean wash method, modified for traditional wash, and the original Gary Dean wash method for rinseless, is literally the best, most efficient, safest on your paint way to wash your car, period. The two bucket method is dead. It is what it is. Two bucket method is not as safe as the Gary Dean wash method. And a lot of you guys out there have always said, oh, well, you didn't invent the way you do it. Well, here's the thing. It's called the Gary Dean wash method. I put a series of events in order and told you about it because that's how I do it. It's the Gary Dean wash method. It is what it is. And it literally is the best thing going for washing your vehicle. Rinseless or traditional wise. All right, I've got all the wheels cleaned with the grip launch wheel and grime cleaner. Uh, and now I'm about to start claying with my Japanese clay bar that I import from Japan. It literally is the most aggressive fine clay I've ever used. So it gets a lot of contamination off. And you'll notice I'm not using any real lube per se. I'm using the wash water and the rinse water only because it's not 
the surface of the paint is not incredibly uh, hot right now as it's uh, not quite noon yet. You can see all the contaminants that came off the paint just with half of the hood. Now I flipped it over, now I'm doing this fender. And I give it a, a thorough once over on jobs like this. Efficiency is definitely how you make money in detailing, for sure. But uh, fender wasn't bad. Generally the horizontal panels are the worst, like the hoods, the roof, the trunk lid, that kind of thing, the tops of the fenders. And uh, you want to be as efficient as possible. And the reality is perfection is not reality. So striving for it is impossible. It's an impossible task for perfection. Now you can get it really close. You can make it look amazing. But I can tell you what, most people want clean and shiny. And I have realized that years back. And I focus on clean and shiny. I give the people what they want. When they call me for a detail, I will give them as close to perfection as I can get if that's what they want to pay me for. If they want clean and shiny, I'm more than happy to just clean it up really nice and make them happy. I listen to what the customer says, not what I want to do. I fulfill my need to detail by just doing the job, showing up on time, and pleasing the customer. I'm not working for me. I'm working for the customer. I want to do what they want. I pay attention to what they say. Things they point out specifically are the most important things to them. I get those things done, move on to the rest, get paid jump on the next one. That's how you make money in detailing. So anyway, um, if the surface of the paint were hotter, I would definitely recommend using lube versus just using uh, water. But it's okay for this uh, particular situation. So I'm gonna go ahead around the car and get it all clayed. And uh, jump on the interior because I want to do the outside and let it dry while I'm working on the inside. So I can just go right into the uh, ceramic, ceramic acrylic uh, hybrid booth, spray coating right after I'm done with the interior. I don't have to worry about the outside, it's already dry. So I'm letting, I'm using deionized water by the way, and uh, that's uh, another situation I want to just let you guys know. I've showed you before, but All Florida Water is the company I get my stuff from. This is their medium kit. Uh, it's two different tanks, but that's their information. You can call and ask for Jason. Jason is my, the guy that delivers my tanks to me. Awesome guy. The company is awesome. The prices are very fair. I lease mine 12 weeks at a time, and I pay for the 12 weeks every time I re-up. So, those guys have been amazing to me. I highly recommend them if you're a detailer, whether you're doing only rentals or not. You can find a way to incorporate some DI water into your life. Uh, but this is DI water. Once I get it all clayed, it's going to dry on its own. No water spots. It's going to look awesome. And then I'm going to go right into the uh, Ceramic Acrylics uh, Hybrid Boost spray coating. And she'll be good to go. Uh, with that product, and I'll mention it again, I, w I do not recommend that you use it as a drying aid. You don't want to dilute it. You want to use it direct to paint. So, here we go. I'm going to finish claying and then jump on the interior. Okay. So, vacuum the interior out. And that's not incredibly uh, scientific. So, I didn't bother showing you guys that process. I pulled the rubber mats out because I'm actually going to clean everything on the interior is going to get wiped down with the antimicrobial everything cleaner or AMEC, A-M-E-C, if you find it online somewhere and people are using an acronym, it is AMEC, A-M-E-C and uh, I've got it diluted one, well I should say one part product to about six parts water in this spray bottle so first thing I'm going to do so they can sit out here and dry is I'm going to go ahead and give these mats a quick spray. Just going to spray them down just a little bit to just get the uh, the dirt off of them. I'm not even going to let it sit and dwell. I'm just going to spray it down, grab the pressure washer, and go to town. You can see how much dirt that product 
broke down off of those things. So that's it. All clean now, and I'm gonna let them sit inside the car while I do the rest of the car. But I'll lose her. Go ahead and do the other side. Give it a spray down. Nothing fancy here. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the Amec is antimicrobial, whereas the IPC is not. So uh, the Amec is definitely the strongest cleaner in my line as far as uh, just general purpose cleaning goes. Uh, Tiger's Blood is probably going to be the strongest as far as like degreasing and whatnot. But as far as general cleaning and versatility, the Amec is the best. Uh, I usually reserve Amec for interior cleaning, getting the interior, interior looking as best or as good as possible, and, you know, getting rid of the germs and whatnot as well. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start on these seats, you can see some spots, I'm going to go ahead, I got it on stream, I'm going to put on spray. I'm going to go ahead and do what I call the damp shampoo on these seats. I've got a damp microfiber towel here. And I'm literally, I don't want to wake up the whole stain. Because if you do that, you'll, it's a never ending battle of the stain coming back up through the fabric. And all I'm trying to do is just clean the fabric so the stain is gone and then it, it can dry. We're not looking to get all of the soiling out of the fabric or the foam because that's pretty much impossible once it's soaked in like that uh, without pulling these seats from the car, treating them, and then uh, pressure washing everything. So that's how I do that. Very easy, not complicated. Again, you can see how bad this seat is. All these stains. I'm just going to pre-treat everything. I'm not going to soak it a lot. I'm just going to pre-treat. Heavier in the areas with the soiling. But that's it. We're just getting it the top surface wet. We're not going to soak. I'm going to let it sit for just a second. And take that same damp towel. We're going to start soaking up the uh, the soiling. We're working with just the top layer here. We're just trying to wake up the top layer and get it all out. Notice how awesome that looks. If you can't get everything you need to get out like that, give it another spray. Go to town. And anytime you're ready, you can take that damp towel and dip it back in your rinse bucket, which is what I recommend that you, you do, put a couple gallons of water in a bucket so that when you're doing this, once this towel gets soiled and whatnot, you can rinse your towel out and go back at it with your clean towel. Get more work done with a clean towel than you will with a dirty towel, that's for sure. So, now I'm definitely going to have to go over all this again. But it's a little bit difficult with the camera. But you get the gist. Keep going over it and rinsing your towel out till it's clean. But don't soak it, don't soak the fabric too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and go at all these stains. And we'll be back after I got it done. Okay, as you can tell, I'm sweating profusely because it's hot. And if you notice, headliner is slammed soiled with all kinds of crap. Who knows what it is? But see how dirty this side is, but I have cleaned that side. 
The secret to headliner cleaning is to not oversaturate. That's important. So I've got my antimicrobial everything cleaner here. And you want to soak everything lightly. Lightly mist it on. Do not oversaturate or you will break down the adhesive that's holding the headliner up to the line, to the uh, actual cardboard lining. So once you've got that up there, you can go into scrubbing it out with a damp microfiber towel, just like upholstery shampooing. But you want to be gentle so that you're pulling up the soiling but not damaging the fibers. Very important. Again, most important thing about headliner cleaning is to not oversaturate. Because you're trying to pull whatever's in there out, but you don't want to break down the adhesive in the actual liner. So, Scrub, 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 scrub. Once you get all of the bulk off, you want to go ahead and rinse your towel out so that you're not scrubbing old dirt or soiling with new dirt or soiling. So I'm going to go rinse a towel out and I'll finish with this. And I'll show you what the whole headliner looks like when I'm done. Okay, I'm done with the interior. I still got to do the coating on the exterior and dress the tires, but the interior is all done. The seats were pretty soiled. As you guys probably remember, the cup holder, console, everything was pretty nasty. But I did the damp shampoo with the antimicrobial everything cleaner like I showed you guys on all of the interior. I cleaned all of like the Amec is awesome on steering wheels. It gets all the dirt and grime off, but also all the bacteria and anything, you know, the bad stuff that's growing on there, it's gonna destroy that stuff and make it nice and healthy to touch. Um so like I said I've got this bottom portion of the seat very clean, stain, pretty much stain free. Is it perfect? No. Perfection is not reality. However, it looks dramatically better. Uh, back in the carpets. These carpets in these uh, lower end cars are really difficult to deal with. Uh, by lower end, I mean it's not a Mercedes or BMW, but you know, the Nissan, Honda, a lot of the Japanese cars will have this really decent looking carpet when things are new, but when uh, contaminants or, you know, dirt and debris start getting trapped in it, it's almost impossible to clean it all out. So you just do the best you can and there you go. Clean the door jams, I clean the uh, windows, and that headliner Headliner looks amazing. And that's all you can say about that. No more spots all over the place. Looks awesome. I'm still sweating to death. That's what we do here in Florida. Fight rain and sweat all day, every day. Oh, that's pretty awesome. I laid down on the seat, and uh, my shirt, Detail Juice Nation, <laughs> left a little imprint. It'll go away when it dries. Pretty awesome. Whew! Man, what a day. So, this 2016 Honda Civic is all done now. It looks awesome. I had to pull it inside and then let it sit while I went to lunch to apply the Sam Ceram Acrylics Pro Hybrid Boost Coating. 
because the sun will dry it up very fast because of uh, the hardener and the product cures very fast. But anyway, it looks amazing. I got the product on. Something new I'm going to start doing in all my videos is telling you guys, you know, when I when I am doing a, a detail job for for money, uh, which is pretty much the only detail jobs I do besides my own cars. Uh, I'm gonna start letting you guys know how much I charge for the uh, job because I really don't care. Um, I don't compete with other detailers. Uh, in fact, I'm. I barely detail full time anymore. I've got so much going on, but you know I do actively take jobs, so I am still in the middle of the trenches, trenches, getting it done, uh, testing my products, and you know developing my products. But as far as detailing all day, every day, I, I just don't anymore. Uh, and I really could care less what someone else charges, or if someone's trying to slash my prices so they can get a job. I really don't care. I only compete with myself, and my customers know that if they want the best, they come to me. If they want, you know, the way I do it, they come to me. Um, you know, I believe I provide the highest quality at any price. It doesn't matter what the price is. Quality is awesome. I listen to my customers, and I do a great job every time. That's my commitment to my customers. So, with that said, I don't worry about what I charge getting out there to potentially have to compete with other people. I really don't care. So, uh, as far as this job goes, I washed with the Grip Launch soap, as you saw. I probably should have used stripper soap. Um, it would have stripped everything off, left the primer, but I ended up using stripper spray to remove anything that was on there already prior to using the Ceramic Acrylics Pro Hybrid Boost spray coating. Um, as far as that coating goes, to wash clay bar and then uh, use stripper spray or use stripper soap at the beginning, uh, whatever the process I use at that particular time is, um, I charge $200 for that service. That's a full exterior job, wash clay and then protection. Uh, that Ceramic Acrylics uh, Pro Hybrid Boost spray coating should give you one plus year of protection. It's truly an amazing product, but I would say that it is mine. My name's on the bottle. Uh, the labels are all I'm waiting on to release the product. So you'll get a, uh, an official release is August 1st, 2018. Uh, like I said, I had to pull it inside to uh, clean it up a little bit better with the stripper spray and remove anything that's on there and uh, also leave the priming catalyst to help the coating bond better. But that's a one plus year coating, no problem, super easy application, literally spray on the panel, wipe it in evenly, give it an hour to cure. Uh, it's sitting outside because I want the sunlight to help it cure. Uh, at this point, I pulled it in to do it, pulled it out to let it cure. Um, I cleaned the wheels, you saw that. Uh, the tires have transformed dressing from my signature series line that is the strongest and the best tire gel situation that I have in my all my lines um, what else you guys saw what I did with uh, the interior this car does need to be polished by the way I just it wasn't part of the deal she just wanted uh, clean and protection so anyway as far as the interior goes, you can see that the seats look amazing compared to how they did look. Sorry, it's a little dark in here. And then, if you remember what the headliner looked like, it looks awesome now. Door panels all clean, door jams all clean, console all cleaned up. To clean the sunroof and stuff, that cover there had splatter all over it. The seat had splatter all over it. Everything's good. Clean the windows. I used Infinite Purpose Cleaner to pre-break pre pre down all those bugs before I hit them with the pressure washer. But that's it. If you guys got questions for me about any of my products at DetailJuice.com. If you're looking to do a awesome jet ski tour or uh, rent some awesome skis, check out ResetCharters.com when that's live. You can also check out ResetCharters.com. Um, you got questions?
questions for my services, I will take your detailing job. I just don't go out looking for it. So if you guys call me uh, and want a detailing job done, uh, I definitely will accommodate you. Doesn't matter how big or small it is. Uh, I can either do mobile or you can come to my shop at 5008 West Limeball Avenue, Suite 11 in Tampa. That's 33624, Tampa, Florida. But that is a 2016 Honda Civic.